What's up, y'all? I hope everybody having a very blessed day. You know, this is your boy JP the Install Guy here to make your install life just a tad bit easier. And today we have a 2016 Infinity Q70, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm going to show you how to actually run some wires through the firewall. We have to hook up an amp and sub inside this vehicle. And I'm going to show you all how to run that power wire through that firewall because I know the Infinities can be a little intimidating. These are the type of things that you're into. Please consider subscribing because these are the things that we do here at the channel car audio tutorials ready to remove us anything car audio install related that's what this channel is about so without further ado let's go ahead and get to it now i do want to say this first i uh i wasn't going to do a video on this vehicle and i just started working and then i was like you know what let's go ahead and do the vehicle but i didn't want to put everything back together so i can take it apart so a lot of some of the stuff is almost loose so i don't want the person to be like oh you need to show us everything man look these are the steps and that's what you have to do. Now, I'm not gonna leave you hanging though. So, first thing we wanna do is uh, take that part off. That's just the uh, battery cover. Then, this part, we're gonna go ahead and take this off. It is held down by these clips. How you wanna take this clip off is you wanna take it right here, get up under that center piece, and you wanna pop that up. Once you pop that up, you can remove the whole thing. We're gonna do the same thing right here. Show you guys one more time. Uh oh, well that worked too. Now, like I said, these are the two, just me showing you how to do it. There is one, two, three, four, five of those that you have to take off in order for that piece to come off like that. And then we are here at that battery. Now, the next thing that you wanna do is take this part off. You have another one of those clips right here. Take that one out. And we have one more of those clips right here. We're going to take that one out. Now with those clips taken out, what I want y'all to do is take this and pull it towards you. And then once you pull it towards you, look what we got right there, baby. We have a grommet where our wires are actually going into. So since we know that it's actually going in this way, going down, and we are on the passenger side of the vehicle, we need to get over here to the glove box. To take this out, you need to remove that one Phillip. There's another Phillip right there, another Phillip right there, and another Phillip right there. Once you get those out, you have one more right, if I can get it, right down there right here in this corner and then you also have one in that exact same corner to get those like i said i know somebody's going to be upset because i'm not actually taking out it all the way full but i'm telling you these are the the steps that i did because like i said i didn't want to put it all back together first thing that you do first thing that you do have to do is come over here and pop this little piece off take out now one thing that i will say as far as taking the screw out right there on both of those sides is i use my right angle driver this right here goes on the end of your drill and then it allows me to come down right here and drill stuff out at the angle because you won't be able to go straight on with this so you guys might want to look into getting one of those tools let's take this one out And when you take that out, when you get all those down, uh, everything else is held in with clips that go into here and one more right here. And as you can see right here, this is where our bundle of wires is coming out at. Now, if you see this, this is a pick tool that I have and I just kind of poked a hole through uh, just to see how, uh, where it was gonna come out at. So let me go back to the engine so you can see where it's coming in at. All right, guys, so there is a small, there's a little hole, little circular thing right there. There's not actually a hole there. I just kind of put my pick tool and poke through to make sure that I wasn't going to hit any type of wires of any sort. So uh, that's me just kind of sticking that down in that hole. And then what I probably want to do is get my razor knife and I just want to kind of cut a little slit right at the top right over that hole I don't want to make it too too big because we already have a hole and you don't know where the wires are right up under there so I just want to do a right at the top and I'm only doing that so I can stick my wire pulling tool right through
see where it comes out on the other side, probably the same way. All right, so as you can see, our wire tool is coming right out of that grommet. So now the easy part is just to go ahead and tape that uh, power wire up to that and then just run it through. Now that we now that we have it taped up, let's go ahead and pull it through the inside. But we have it mounted to the battery right here. I ran up under there, zip tie here, zip tie there, zip tie there, just so this is secure. And we have it going through here. Now this right here is called strip caulk, and the reason you want to actually seal it is because uh, when this hood is actually down. There's these little vents right here. So if it starts raining, you don't want water to come into where you cut at since this actually is pointing down. If that passenger gets in that car one day and that carpet is wet, it's gonna be an issue. You're gonna have to replace the carpet. So make sure you seal it some type of way. Now, as far as what we do with the wire, uh, we're gonna zip tie it right along this. But I'm just showing you how I'm running it right now. You got the factory wiring right here, so I'll probably run a zip tie right here with this harness and run one more at the top. This little piece, well, this part, this running board part literally just pops up. It's only held in by clips. So I pop that part up. This actually pops out like that. So you can run it down, zip tie it like that. That clamps back. And then, You're gonna run that bad boy right along the factory wiring through here. Now at this point, you can zip tie it along the factory wiring if you want to. And I probably will go back and do that if I have more time, but this way I know it's not gonna be pinched by anything. I'm gonna go ahead and go to this rear panel. It should pop up just like that. Now you still have these little channels right here. So what you could do is take your wire pull tool, stick it all the way through to the other side, then pull your wire out. Or you can try to, when you get it to that point right up there, you can try tucking it up under this carpet all the way here and then run it back through whichever way works for y'all. I'm actually going to use the tuck method for this video just to show you guys what to do. Now we can pull it right here And if you want, you can try to run it through this channel, but we are here at this point. What I like to do, if I am just gonna tuck it, I like to kind of pull it a little tight right here and I'll throw a zip tire down there to kind of help ensure that that thing doesn't drop. We'll run it up under that little situation right here. And then we'll pull the rest of our power wire up under there. Now, you may notice that I have the back seats out and I already have them out for a reason. I wanted to show you guys how or what tab you have to pull because you don't just need to lift up on the seat. Get your finger down here, pull that tab. If you don't pull this tab and you just try to lift up on the seat because you think that it's tight, you will end up breaking that and then your seat will never sit uh, kind of flush. So you want to pull that, then lift the seat up on both sides. That gets that out. Now, uh, show y'all a way to get it all the way to the back on these things right here you have four 14 millimeter uh little nuts that's on these bolts you have one right here one right there one right there and one right there behind the seat now once you have those out you can literally pull it up and then you want to lift up on the seat once we lift up on the seat, we can pull it back. And the reason you have to lift it up is because of this hook right here going in that spot. But if you look on this passenger side, you see this group of wires that's actually going through that hole right there. Uh, you can do one of two things. You could try to run it through there or Somebody like me is just gonna drill a hole big enough for my power wire to go through because on the other side is literally nothing. And let me show you what I'm talking about. When you're in the trunk, you're gonna have to drop this uh, trunk lid down and you'll see a bunch of holes uh, like that. 
There's some across the back light there as well. They take the exact same clips that we just got done taking out earlier. So like I said, you pop that middle piece up and then pull it down. And then once you get it down, see, absolutely nothing on that other side. So what we can do, that hole that's in the middle, we can just expand that a little bit bigger with one of our step drill bits. And then we'll be able to get our power wire all the way through. And there you have it guys, we have our power wire from the front all the way to the back. And that's just about it for this video. Uh, this does have the Bose amp. The Bose amp is up under the trunk deck lid right there. We will be installing the LOC since he's hooking this up to the factory radio. So if you guys wanna know how to install a line output converter uh, for your vehicle, then make sure you hit that link in the description. I also have a card in the corner pointing that out for you as well. If you wanna run a remote wire, you can run it the exact same way but finding the 12 volt source inside your vehicle will be another video that I've done for you already all that stuff will be in the how-to playlist and so this one already has a factory sub it's just not giving him what he wants as far as bass so we want to tap off the frequencies of the uh, factory sub because there's gonna be nothing but low bass going into here or low frequencies so Low frequencies going into our converter means low frequencies uh, coming out of our converter. We're just hooking it up high level going into the converter and then low level going out, which is why they call it a high to low level converter or line output converter or whatever. Either way, I don't want to make this too, too long because I got to hurry up and get this thing finished. But if you found any type of value in this video, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, share, comment if you want to. I want to take this time to give a shout out to all my Patreons. You guys go the extra mile in supporting the channel. So I make sure I go the extra mile in supporting you. We're giving you wire colors, all type of behind the scenes footage, stuff that I do not show on the channel. Also, that is the platform that I'm using to give all my one-on-one -on -one trainings. So now if you don't want to be held down to anything long term, but this video still brought you some value, and you want to support there is that heart down there up under the video that says thanks and i ask that anybody to do anything that they don't want to do but anything that you do is greatly appreciated so till next time this is your boy jp the install guy signing out y'all have a blessed day